What is going on everybody? Weedles from Needle here, and we are back again with an Altar Sun and Altar Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's going to be an overused tier battle. Hooray! How's it going? Versus Dr. Dick. Hello, it's me. <laughs> How do you guys get these names to the filter? That's all I'm wondering. Like, tell me. So, um, yeah, we're playing OU because it's everyone's favorite tier, myself included. So, one thing I noticed that I haven't been doing in overused battles is that I haven't been using enough legendaries, and that is why I've been losing a lot of overused battles. So I decided to bring a lot of legendaries in this battle because this is how we overuse people, that's all I'm saying. So let's just hop right into this battle against Dr. Dicklick. So I did off of my Metamence, my Salamence, expecting Landers there and formed the Lando Thick! To lead off. So I lead off with my Salamence. He's going to intimidate my Mence, which is fine. And I'm going to intimidate him, but notice that his intimidate went before mine. So I know that the Landers T is choice guy before the battle even begins. So I know all Landers T carry hidden power right. So he goes straight for HP ice and the Salamence. We're able to live at 30 health, inactivate our weakness policy. And I'm like, yes, now I get to hide his little pump Oh. <laughs> And so we miss Hydro Pump against Menace, and I'm like, okay, I may as well keep Salamence for Death Fodder because letting it stay in there and die to HP I should be depressing. So I bring in my legit Jirachi, really cool event Jirachi I got a few um, years ago. Right. Is this where we are as a community? My opponent's gonna go for HP Ice, it does do very little damage to my Jirachi because Jirachi is pretty tanky and we're going to get our leftovers recovery. And now I should be able to go for Stealth Rocks from here. So now my opponent's gonna switch out Outlander's Thick and bring in the Molten Magma, the Shiny Heatran. So I just go straight for my Stealth Rock just because this is how we overuse. I don't normally go for Stealth Rocks immediately, but just because we're playing in the overuse tier, I just need to get up my Stealth Cox. So we get up our Stealth Cox, and now I'm going to pull a switch because I have no switches to Heatran. I'm pretty much forced to sack off my Salamence and hope he misses Magma Storm. And I'm praying he doesn't miss Magma Storm because I do have the Earthquake to hit this Heatran. And unfortunately though, my opponent does hit the Magma Storm. And apparently Heatran's actually like S minus rank right now and overused right besides Kartana. And I'm actually wondering why um, he trans consider S minus rank. If some like um, competitive OU player wants to explain that to me, I would appreciate it. So now I bring in Hoopa Unbound, and I'm about to unbound this Heat trans butthole with what? Focus Blast. So I go for Focus Blast. Sigh, and then I get Magma Storm, and I'm like, you know, I'm pretty sure my, uh, Focus Blast would have knocked out that Heatran. Uh, maybe not if it was like Spadef, but yeah, I miss Focus Blast, and I miss Hydro Palm, and I just cannot hit any attacks today, and so I'm being put pretty far behind in this battle. So now my opponent's gonna withdraw up the Heatran and bring in Lando Thick to pivot into Focus Blast because it does resist the fighting type move, and definitely understandable. I was kind of expecting Toxapex, but I guess my opponent doesn't know I'm Specs or Scarf, so. Go for Focus Blast, of course I missed another, another one. one. You guys all know how Focus Blast works. And now I'm gonna switch out of my Hoopa Unbound because I don't want to let it die to U-turn. Now I'm gonna bring in my Tapu Bulu here because I wanna set up my Grassy Terrain because I use Tapu Bulu in every OU battle. I'm sorry, I know I use the same Pokemon in all OU battles, but that's what the OU tier is all about. You gotta use the same Pokemon over and over and over again because that's fun, right? No. So now my opponent's gonna bring it sit on my face, okay. the Pharaoh. Ah! Like, okay, bro, that nickname needs to chill out because I'm not sitting on a Ferrothorn's face, okay? I might sit on Lander's T's face, but not on Ferrothorn's face. So now I'm gonna switch out a top of Bulu and bring in my mascot. Expect my opponent to go for Gyro Ball or Spikes, as my opponent does go for Spikes. And you may be wondering why is Mimikyu named my mascot? And there's why, because my Mimikyu has Copycat. And so I get to Copycat the Ferrothorn, who's going for some Spikes. Now I'm gonna go for my own Spikes. Now I have Stealth Rocks and a layer of Spikes up on my opponent's side of the field. My opponent thinks he's safe and goes for a second layer of Spikes. And so my opponent's gonna hand me another layer of spikes so am i complaining hell nah so i get to go for copycat yet again and then we're going to copycat his spikes so we get a second layer of spikes up so we have stealth rocks and two layers of spikes up which i think is definitely worth my opponent getting up two layers of spikes himself and my opponent goes for dryer ball here just to break my disguise because maybe get behind disguise is annoying as shit he's going to break my disguise and i'm going to activate my red card uh. not a weakness policy unfortunately you can't activate weakness policy off of disguise so in comes tox effects to give me a hug and this is kind of annoying because Toxic Packs can just like destroy me with like Toxic Spikes and I'm going to get booty blasted by Toxic Spikes because of course, Weedle's Needle teams don't have Defog. <laughs> so I'm going to switch out my mascot here, not wanting to get the T-Spikes up. Now I'm going to bring in my Rave, my shiny Blacephalon. Yes, yes! Oh, I almost saw me say it! 
Oh my goodness! We got it, dude! Shiny was F1! My hands went to go soft reset! I almost failed it, dude! That's rough, buddy. So in comes Shiny Bosefalo, I'm gonna take some damage from Spikes and use my opponent's gonna go for some T-Spikes. I figured my opponent would do that or go for a Skull, so I felt like bringing in Bosefalo was my best play. And I should be able to live a Skull pretty comfortably because it's Toxapex, and I should be able to go for a Combine because my opponent's team, one thing I noticed from Team Preview, which I forgot to mention in the Team Preview screen, is that my opponent has no Ghost Resistance, so Bosefalo can actually do a lot of work potentially. So I'm gonna go for a Combine here with my Bosefalo, hoping my opponent doesn't go for Haze immediately, you know, seeing that I'm gonna go for Combine, because but Slifflon isn't really used all that frequently and overused to be honest. Like I haven't really seen it being used much in like Poke Games, Showdown Lives, or like Blunders. So a very little of Scald. Inactivate our weakness policy. So this Blissiflon set I have used one time before. This is a shiny Blissiflon I got off Wonder Trade, so it's probably hacked. And I know, I know, I know, I, 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 I normally don't use hacked Pokemon, but like shiny Blissiflon's too beautiful not to use, okay? So I go for stored power here, and we're going to Oko this Give Me a Hug, the Toxapex. So down goes Toxapex to stored power. And we're going to get a Nick in the speed because of this weird EV spread. I have 20 special attack EVs or something along those lines in 252 speed. So I actually get a speed beast boost. My opponent actually thought I got a special attack beast boost. So he brings in Scarf Lando T to no avail, unfortunately, because we do outspeed him thanks to this speed based boost. Gonna be able to go for stored power, which at this point is more powerful than Stab Shadow Ball. Adango's lander is thick. And yeah, well, Cephalon's looking pretty scary right now because my opponent's best counter to this thing is Heatran. And I'm not too sure if Heatran could live a plus three Blissiflon Shadow Ball. In comes the Heatran yet again. And I'm really hoping that Blissiflon has enough firepower to knock out Heatran. I think the spikes and Stealth Rocks are going to help me out a lot because I'm pretty sure Earth Power will knock me out. So I'm going to go for Shadow Ball here. Hopefully we can knock out Heatran as the Heatran's going to go down. So now it goes Molten Magma, the very original nickname for the Heatran. We're going to get another based boost. And yeah, this is looking like an epic Blissiflon sweep. And comes Ed Edgar ZY. I guess that's like Zygarde's name, like rearranged, which is kind of cool. And Zygarde can't extreme speed because I'm a ghost type. And so I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball is going to knock out Zygarde. But I go for Stored Power anyway, just because at this point, Stored Power is more powerful than Shadow Ball, even with Stab. So Stored Power is going to one shot Zygarde. And some person really wanted to see me use Blissiflon. So um, shout outs to you, buddy. I'll, I'll leave like a screenshot of your comments. So hopefully, this um, Blissiflon sweep is satisfying enough for you. So I'm going to Sparathorn sit on my face. And this Sparathorn's face will be sat upon with my Fire Blast. So I got really unlucky in the beginning of the battle, but Blissiflon literally brought this game back single-handedly because my opponent didn't really have a T-Tire. So yeah, Blissiflon kind of like rips their teams. I don't have a good Ghost Fire Resist. So it's just like Chandler on steroids, which is kind of funny. Now in comes Clefable, the Cupcake. And I don't think Cupcake can live a stored power. So I get to go for stored power here. And there's no way in hell Clefable's gonna live this. So stored power is going to knock out Clefable. And that's gonna be the end of the battle. We're able to win with an epic Blissiflon sweep. This is why Blissiflon is the best. Yes. So this is not gonna be the only battle for you guys today. No wars. We have a second battle against Chris. And my opponent's team this time around is really scary. I mean, the other opponent's team is pretty scary as well. But uh, the Magirna Landorus T, of course, there's Landorus T in every OU battle, every single freaking OU battle, there's always Landorus T. But I'm the one in these OU battles using Tapus. Like, there was no Tapus on my opponent's teams. I'm the one using the OP Tapu Pokemon. So I guess I'm not one to talk. So let's just hop into this battle against Chris. So I expect my opponent to lead off with Landorus T again. So I lead off with my... Salamence expecting the exact same thing for my my previous opponent. And he leads off with Landers T. It is shiny, of course, and they're going to intimidate. See that I outspeed Landers T this time around, so I know that this Landers T is not Choice Scarf. It's actually a really useful interaction that I'm glad I gave my Salamence Intimidate for because Moxie is normally better in every situation, but Intimidate allows me to sub Dragon Dance a little bit easier. Okay, so don't hate. So I'm gonna go for Dragon Dance. Expect my opponent to want to go for Ed and Power Ice. My opponent goes for them Stealth Cox, of course. My team is very weak to Stealth Rocks. I have no Hazard Control unless I defog on Salamence which I do not, so um, yeah, Stealth Rocks are going to penetrate me. I'm going to go for a second Dragon Dance here. Hope my opponent is very fearful, and just in case, like, the Latios is, like, Choice Scarf or something, because I saw there was a Pinsir on my opponent's team, and it's probably Mega Pinsir if he's running Pinsir, so it's probably Scarf, Latios, and Mega Pinsir. So he's going to HP Ice. We're going to live. And that is our week's policy. 
Okay, so now I'm like, all right, Solomons, you missed the ball in the last battle. Please hit Hydro Pump. Please hit. And thankfully we do hit the Hydro Pump. And so Landers, he's gonna go down. So we one shot Landers thick with the Hydro Pump. Even Ooh. though this one's not named Landers thick, all Landers TR thick, okay? But now my opponent's gonna bring in the Mega Pinsir. <laughs> And I don't want to die to Quick Attack. I can use this thing for Death Fodder, and I'm pretty sure I love Stealth Rock. So now I'm going to Volt Switch into my Jirachi here, expecting my opponent to go for Quick Attack, because if he doesn't, he might just get swept by Solomon. So I'm expecting my opponent to want to go for the Quick Attack. So in comes Mega Pinsir, going to Mega Evolve. And Mega Pinsir looks pretty badass, to be honest with you. I love how it just, like, grows wings. I think it's kind of funny. My opponent's going to go for Quick Attack. Unfortunately, it gets a crit, but it doesn't do much damage anyways. And my Jirachi, I just pretty much get free Stealth Rocks here. However, my opponent has a Magnezone. He has a Magnezone, so... I know my opponent's probably going to switch into Magnezone. I do not have U-Turn on my Jirachi either, so I assume my opponent was going to bring in the uh, Magnezone or go for Sword Stance with his uh, Pinsir. So I brought in Solomon here just to get the Intimidate on the Pinsir or on the off chance he brought in Magnezone on the double switch, and then I can scout if he's Scarf or not. So this Solomon's play was just overall just my safest play all around. So um, my opponent's going to switch out of the Magnezone, telling me that he's likely not Choice Scarf, and he's going to bring in his Magearna here, expecting me to go for Fire Blast. So I go for the Earthquake, so... Yeah, I go for Earthquake. I'm pretty sure if he expected Fire Blast, he should have brought in the Latios instead, but I guess I could have went for a Dragon move in that situation, so I don't know. But now my opponent's gonna pull a switch into his Pinsir here, expecting to go for Earthquake again, but I go for the Fire Blast. So I go for Fire Blast here. Pinsir comes in on this Fire Blast. Unfortunately, Mega Salamence, or not Mega Salamence, regular Salamence doesn't have the raw power to uh, take out Mega Pinsir, and Quick Attack's gonna knock out my Meta Mence. So unfortunately, my Meta Mence didn't get to break the meta in these battles, but it's okay. There, there was a battle where I did absolutely wreck someone with this Mega, or I keep saying Mega Salamence because of VGC. Um, I, I wrecked someone with the Salamence set in a different battle uh, before. So my opponent's gonna go for return here, break my disguise with the Mimikyu, and this play doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I made this play. So we're gonna activate the um, red card so the pinch is gonna be forced out, and my opponent's gonna bring in the Magnezone here. So I go for the uh, Copycat. Okay, so I go for Copycat because I have no offensive moves on my Mimikyu. So I go for Copycat just in case like he tries to go for a Sword Stance, but then I realized that he's just gonna be forced out if he attacks me anyway. So this Copycat move made no sense. I don't know why I went for Copycat Return, but I did. But now I'm gonna go for that Magic Room. Yeah. Yes, Mimikyu gets Magic Room. So I have Magic Room because I do have Nasty Plat on my Hoopa and Bounds. My opponent goes for a Substitute and I'm like, oh no, honey. not on girl. I go for the Destiny Bond immediately. Um, considering I went for Magic Room there instead of Destiny Bond, it actually like works out really well for me because if I went for Destiny Bond when my opponent went for Substitute, I would have been in a really bad position, but because I didn't reveal Destiny Bond, uh, my opponent got debated by the Mimikyu, and so my mascot's gonna go down, but we're gonna take down the Magnezone with the Destiny Bomb, which is really good for my Jirachi, because my Jirachi just couldn't really be on the field without Magnezone being alive, so that's why uh, Magnepul's pretty annoying to deal with when you have Steel Types, and that's why Magnezone's really good on certain team comps, because Mega Pinsir struggles with Steel Types, Magnezone gets rid of Steel Types, so that combination is usually used pretty frequently when you use Mega Pinsir. So in comes Greninja, gonna go for the Dark Pulse, but because of Magic Room, his Choice Specs are not activated, so we're able to live. And I have to go for my Stealth Rock, so uh, the Mega Pinsir is gonna die unless the uh, Latios gets the Defog. And I'm just gonna let the uh, Greninja get the Dark Pulse kill. This may seem kind of strange because you normally want to avoid Ash Greninja getting the kill at all costs. However, in this situation, I want the Greninja to be locked in a Dark Pulse because I'm pretty sure um, Hoopa and Down can live a Dark Pulse because it's the death set's pretty large. And I want my opponent to feel inclined to sack off the Pinsir. So this play actually, like, I thought a few turns ahead in this situation. So I bring in my hoop on bound here. Gonna tank some rocks, that's fine. I know my opponent's probably gonna sack off his Mega Pinsir, like, I'd say 70% of the time. So now my opponent is gonna pull the sack off into Mega Pinsir. I thought he might want to stay in there, but I'm pretty sure I would have lived a Specs Dark Pulse. Like, I'm 90% sure I would have lived that. And I would have been able to go for the Nasty Plot. So I go for the Nasty Plot here with my hoop on bound to get my special attack up in the air. And unfortunately, Magic Room is going to wear off, but that means my Choice Scarf is now activated. So my opponent's going to bring in the Magirna here, and I'm like, oh shit, it's probably a Salt Vest Magirna, but I'm at plus two special attack. Hoopa and Bound special attack stat is absolutely absurd. So I go for Dark Pulse here. Assault Vest Magirna is so freaking broken. That does nothing. And then the Floor Cannon 
is just gonna knock me out. And so that whole magic room setup was literally made useless just because of Magirna. If Magirna didn't exist, um, I'm pretty sure I would've just won the game with Hoopa Unbound, but that's why Hoopa Unbound's no longer Ubers. It was Ubers and Oras, but Magirna just pretty much made its existence irrelevant. And I'm sure other Pokemon did that as well, but poor Hoopa Unbound. But now I'm gonna bring in my Rave here, yet again, my um, Blacephalon. No need to do the Age Drive meme toys, sorry guys, with Blacephalon. And I'm just gonna go for Fire Blast here. Of course we miss. Like, why would we connect a move? That'd be asking for way too much. And so my opponent's able to go for Volt Switch. I just do very little damage, surprisingly. Um, my Blacephalon actually has a lot of HP investment because I didn't need the um, special attack investment because I want to get the Speed Beast boost because the Weakness Policy plus Combine, I felt like the Speed Beast boost will be more useful. So here I'm going to bring in my Tapu Bulu here because I don't want Ash Greninja to kill off my Blacephalon because I feel like I need the sack off if I want to have a chance of winning. So I bring in Tapu Bulu here. And Tapu Bulu might have a chance to win because Tapu Bulu 1v1's Greninja if it doesn't have Ice Beam slash Gunk Shot. 1v1's Latios and Magirna's low. So I'm thinking that I can actually win the battle with the Tapu Bulu despite the fact that I'm not even offensive Tapu Bulu. I'm just like dual screens Tapu Bulu so I didn't even get to cast any screens in these two battles which is kind of funny. So Tapu Bulu literally does nothing in these battles. But I'm going to go for Horn Leech here and knock out the Magirna. Yo, Magirna thinks it can live and not girl. Grassy Terrain Horn Leech is OP. So Horn Leech is going to knock out the Magirna. So down goes a thick Magirna which everyone thinks Magirna is thick for some reason when it's not. I guess like it is, but people name it thick and it's kind of weird. But now, um, in comes Shiny Latios. <laughs> I'm just like concerned because I don't want to die to like HP fire, but my opponent goes for Psychic. I'm really hoping we live this reasonably well, as unfortunately it does a decent amount of damage, but I do have the light screen. So I set up my light screen here because my opponent's last mons are Greninja and the Latios. So I'm really hoping the Greninja doesn't have Ice Beam. No, some of them carry like spikes for some reason because locking yourself onto spikes is a really good idea. So I go for Horn Leech, you're hoping with uh, the light screen up, I heal more than the Latios is dealing damage to me. And it looks like I am healing more than the Latios is dealing damage to me after the grassy terrain. And so I feel pretty confident here. I might be able to uh, pull out a win in this battle. Granted that the Latios doesn't do enough damage to the point where Greninja can't knock me out in one turn. So I go for Horn Leech here. And the Horn Leech is like a 3 hit KO on Latios. And that's pretty impressive considering I have no attack investment on the top of Bulu. So the top of Bulu is actually coming through. The grassy terrain is going to expire here, unfortunately. So I don't have the boosted grassy terrain terrain anymore or the you know increased recovery but it doesn't really matter because um i've already healed enough damage to the point where i feel like i can live any attack from specs ash Graham with lights green up so horn leech i'm going to knock out that lot i'm going to get some health back here with my top of bulu and I just realized these battles are normally, or they're a little bit faster than they normally are. So I've been like trying to keep up with this battle, but I've noticed I've been talking a lot faster than I normally do because the battles are just a little bit faster. But my opponent's gonna go for Dark Pulse here. I should be able to live this but we get critted and we're gonna lose to Ash Grand because if he didn't flinch me there, I'm pretty sure I would have won the battle with Horn Leech or like gotten enough health back to the point where I would have lived another Dark Pulse. But unfortunately, my opponent outscaled me with the crit and then Dark Pulse is gonna knock out my Blacephalon. And we're gonna lose this battle fair and square to my opponent's Ash Greninja, a fair and balanced Pokemon may I add, and that's gonna be a good game against Chris. So unfortunately, we can't win, we could not win that battle. I felt like Top Blue was gonna come clutch later on in the game, but unfortunately, Hacks got the best of us. It was still a pretty good battle nonetheless. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these double decker OE battles because I don't know, I felt like I should get two battles with this team after getting that epic Blacephalon sweep. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these Wi-Fi battles. If you guys enjoyed these Wi-Fi battles and really want to support my channel, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on the video as it really helps on my channel a lot more than you think and it's always appreciated i do appreciate all of you guys to take the time out of your day to watch my content leave a like and leave a comment it honestly makes my day a lot better knowing there's people out there who actually look forward to my content and it's just like such a bizarre thing to even think about even though i've like been uploading like hundreds of videos it's just kind of bizarre to think about you know like i don't know maybe it's just me i do appreciate every single one of you guys i love you so very much but we're going to move on to the question of the day, which is going to be, what is your favorite core to run in the overuse tier at the moment? Let me know in the comments down below which group of Pokemon, like offensive core, defensive core, like hazard core you like running in the overuse tier in general. Because I'm pretty curious to see like what your favorite cores are that do the most work for yourself and that you put on a lot of teams because it would also help me like team build an OU because let's be real, this team I'm using is absolute trash and like seeing like good OU cores would probably help me even team building because if you come up with some good cores, um, your teams are usually a lot more solid. So one core I like a lot, or I did like a lot back in Oras was Mega Venusaur plus Heatran. Um, Mega Venusaur plus Heatran was just like unkillable. I'm pretty sure like that core is outdated nowadays, but I really liked Mega Venusaur plus Heatran back in the Oras days. But I'm pretty sure Tapu Bulu and Heatran accomplish the same thing. So I guess it's like the same thing, but different Pokemon. So that's the core I would pick for like a balanced thing. 
and offensive. I have used Mega Pinsir and Magnezone before. It's actually really, really potent and scary, and like, Mega Pinsir doesn't have many counters to begin with, because Flying Stab is just so hard to deal with, especially coming off of like that ridiculous attack stat from Mega Pinsir. And then Magnezone just pretty much traps every single Pokemon that would potentially like threaten Scizor, or not Scizor, freaking <laughs> Pinsir. Like, Scizor itself, I think. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure Mega Pinsir beats Scizor 1v1 if it gets the Sword Stance up first. Um, Skarmory is a problem, you get trapped by freaking. <laughs> Uh, Magnezone until Steela gets trapped. Like everything just gets trapped by uh, Magnezone. And you can even run Cartana with run Cartana with Magnezone because Cartana struggles with Steel types and like Magnezone deals with them. So Magnezone offensive cores are really scary to you know face against and they're pretty solid as well. And I would say they're some of my favorite cores to use despite the fact I don't really use them very often. But that's just besides the point. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite overuse cores are because I'm pretty curious to see which cores you guys use in the overuse tier to decent succession. But that's going to be the question of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'll check you guys next time. Bye. That's what